Hey, what's up guys? I'm Nick Acosta. Welcome back to Let's Grow in Christ. And I want to talk to you guys about this book by Francis Chan and his wife, Lisa Chan. It's called You and Me Forever, Marriage and Light of Eternity. Coming up next. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Let's Grow in Christ. If this is your first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we're gonna help you grow in Christ like never before. Also hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time we post a video and you don't miss a thing, okay? So we're gonna be talking about this book by Francis Chan. So this book um, is a book that our ministry, we've been doing this in our book club. We do a book club every Sunday. We gather with believers here in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, we read a whole chapter and we discuss it. Um, and it's mostly uh, married couples, um, but I, I did have a couple people who um, inquired about it who, who are not married yet. Um, and I think they're, they're about to join, but uh, yeah, most of us are, are, are married in that group and uh, we've been loving this book so far. Um, we love it because it's different. It's not just your common Christian um, marriage book. It's a book that focuses on what's truly important, what the Bible truly emphasizes and teaches, um, even uh, in the topic of marriage, okay? Uh, so I just wanted to recommend this book to you guys, uh, You and Me Forever. If you're married, if you're thinking of being married, I definitely do recommend it. Check it out. Um, I love it because it's convicting. Um, it's very convicting. Uh, it reminds us of scripture, of the teachings of Jesus, of our Lord and Savior. Of course, those are the teachings we're supposed to follow. Um, and it shows us that our lives, when we get married, are not supposed to uh, change. Uh, you know, they're not supposed to change in the in in the fact um that we're supposed to live for our marriage now you know um it, it, the, the, our lives do change but we are supposed to be disciples of jesus children of god living for god for the purpose of doing his will glorifying him leading people to him whether we're single or married and that's what a lot of christian marriage books miss and, and i don't like that it kind of makes it about us about each other you 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 me 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 it's about our spouse now it's about our children now it's about their soccer practice now it's about our savings and our retirement and that's not the bible jesus said to follow him and to make disciples to preach the gospel to lead people to him and it's still our purpose and our calling whether we are single or married okay now i want to read you a, a few lines from this book just to show you uh, what kind of book it is and what kind of stuff they say and i'm telling you it's going to lead you to a better relationship with the lord a greater fear of the lord greater conviction and that's what we need guys we don't need you know 10 tips on on how to keep the marriage alive and 10 tips on dating and um and things like that uh we need something from the bible and the bible doesn't teach that the bible says deny yourself love your your, your wife as christ loves the church respect your husband or honor your husband or submit to your husband like the church ought to um, ought, ought to do to the lord jesus christ so it, it it keeps it biblical and that's what i like whether you like it or not you know this is a, a christian channel um and it talks about the christian book the bible so um that's what i'm going to be promoting um things that are that, that i think are biblical that are going to help us um such as those commands that i just mentioned um which i know a lot of people <laughs> they say it's controversial but um if Jesus said it, if it's in the Bible, it shouldn't be controversial in the church. Maybe it should be controversial in the world, but not the church. So check this out. I want to read a few lines here. So this line right here says, uh, this is the mistake a lot of couples make. They spend a lot of time looking at themselves and each other, but very little time staring at God. <laughs> when this is the focus, they naturally begin to structure every aspect of their lives around the few years they have with each other on earth rather than the millions they will spend in his presence or away from his presence these people live as though they are not dying they live as though the king is not returning so this is vital right here this is that 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 fear of the lord 
right? That um, attitude, that mindset, that humility, right? That we have when we want to make sure we're ready and prepared for the Lord's return, right? And when we have the wrong teaching on Christian marriage, it makes everything about fun, about vacation, about sex, about dating, about the kids, about the pets, about the house with the fence and the backyard. But we have to be ready for the Lord's return because we will have no excuse if we're not living for him, okay? We're not following him and we're not keeping his instructions, okay? So that's the mistake a lot of couples make, it says. They spend a lot of time looking at themselves or at each other and very little time spending um, looking at God. And that's what we got to do. Look at him, focus on him just because you're married doesn't mean you don't have to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first anymore. <laughs> Just because you're married doesn't mean you don't you no longer follow Jesus. You're no longer a fisher of men. You're no longer a disciple, a student of the Lord, right? So our attention must still be on him. Our focus should still be God. Amen. And I want you guys to um, look at this here. Check out this little table right here. I don't know if it's a table or I guess a chart, a drawing. Um, and what I like about this is that you, the one on the left, that's what usually, um, that's what people usually talk about. God being number one, then family and friends and work and possessions. But the one on the right, it separates them. It gives them a, a, a big distance between one another because they're so different. They're not on the same level. God and everything else, they're not on the same level. Our focus should be so much on God that there's a big gap and big difference between the other stuff. So God, number one, and then all the way down, basically everything else. That's why Jesus said, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What are all things? Your basic necessities, food, drink, and clothing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be concerned with the things of this world right? The issues of life, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, right? So all that stuff needs to be all the way down and God needs to be number one. I love that. And let's see if I can find something else for you guys. All right. So this page right here says, displaying God to the world is the purpose of the church. And it's also the purpose of marriage. People should see the way I serve my wife and get a glimpse of the humility that Christ showed. Anyone who sees Lisa joyfully following my lead should understand more deeply what it means for the church to follow Christ out of their respect and trust for him. God created marriage to be a picture that displays Christ to the world. My point in all of this is to insist that there's more at stake in your marriage than just your marriage. The beauty of the gospel is at stake. So that's another gospel, God-centered um, paragraph right there. Displaying God to the world is the purpose of the church. It's not about, look at me, look at my wife, look at my husband, they're so sexy, they're so cute, they're so handsome, they're such good workers, no, no, no. Are you showing Christ through your marriage to the world? It, it's God getting the glory. And that's what it's supposed to be about. Amen. And here's one last thing that I want to share with you guys. I'm telling you, you got to get this book. I strongly recommend it. It says, Jesus was clear that following him meant, get this, following him. <laughs> the church has put so much effort into inventing a new form of following Christ that doesn't require imitating him. We teach that even though Jesus allowed his rights to be trampled, we should fight for ours. We teach that even though Jesus lived simply, we have the right to live luxuriously, or as some prefer the term, comfortably. <laughs> Even as we teach that Jesus was rejected by the world, we pursue popularity. Ever wonder how many followers Jesus would have on Twitter or how many likes he would have on his Facebook post? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it talks about things like these. It's just priority, 
right? What, what, what are we doing here? What are we focused on? What, what should be the focus um, of our lives, right? What should be the focus of our lives? Come on, imitating God. The Bible says, imitate God, right? Be holy in conduct as your father in heaven is holy. Follow Jesus, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow Christ, learn from him and do what he did and teach what he taught. That's Christianity. And a lot of times marriage distracts Christians from their true Christian purpose. But the right way, and I think this is what the book teaches and emphasizes, and, and I love the message, the right way to Christian marriage is to use your marriage to pursue your purpose and your calling in Christ Jesus together and give God even the more glory. And that's why I think you should get this book giving God more glory through your marriage, not taking the glory and making it all about your marriage, but making everything still about God. But now two people, one flesh glorifying God together. That's powerful. And I think that's how it should be. Listen, guys, if you like this video, I ask you to hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Have you read this book? Are you thinking of getting it? What questions do you have? Maybe I can help you out and make me your decision. Um, share the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to help you grow in Christ like never before. Okay? Um, listen, if you want to get the book, I'm going to go ahead and put the link to, um, to the book on the description. And uh, if you want to join our book clubs, we still have it. Now, if you watch this video a year from now, it's probably no longer going to be in effect, but we're still holding this book club every Sunday. So if you want to be a part of that, I will also um, uh, I will also ask you just to go ahead and leave a comment and I'll reach out to you with the information. OK, because I don't have a sign up link for that. But we do have a sign up link for our online Bible studies that we have every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'll leave the link on the description for that. Um, so let's let's go ahead and uh, work at following Jesus, living for God, regardless whether we're single, whether we're married, whether we're widows, whatever. Jesus said, follow me. Jesus said, learn from me, do what I do and teach what I teach. That's what he told his disciples. And as disciples of Jesus today in 2020, it's the same old calling, the same command for us. So let's make our lives, our walks about him because that's true Christianity. Amen. Let's grow.